as we go about our work in our group at the MIT Media Lab, we're often focused on the, the importance of helping young people today develop three important qualities. We want to help them learn to think creatively, reason systematically, and work collaboratively. And I think those skills are important for everybody uh, growing up in today's society, everywhere in the world. And I think it would have been important in all eras. If I were around 100 years ago, I hope I would have been arguing for those same qualities. But I think they're especially important today as we're living in a world that today's children are growing up in a world where, where they will face a never ending stream of unknown and uncertain and, and unpredictable situations. So that ability to think and act creatively is more important than ever. And I think it's really been driven home in the past year, as we've heard from many of the previous speakers, that during the pandemic, it's really highlighted the importance of creative thinking to deal with the uncertainties and the unknowns in today's situation. Whether you're a medical professional trying to deal with some of that public health challenges, or just an individual trying to make sense of how to organize your family on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think this importance of thinking creatively and reasoning systematically and working collaboratively has also been driven home. I've been thinking about a lot in the past day as we come to the final stages of the US election, because in the recent months, we've seen this constant assault on truth and reason. Uh, and even just the whole uh, of approach of democracy. So I think it's more important than ever to help the next generation grow up who will be able to you know, deal with these you know, issues through being able to think creatively, reason systematically, work collaboratively to help support a world in which everybody is given those opportunities to create, design, explore, experiment, and reach their full potential. So what does it mean uh, for people to develop these types of creative mindsets and creative capacities. Let me start by giving an example uh, that I saw recently from, it was an example from our Scratch online community. As many of you know, Scratch is a programming language and online community that we developed in our group at the MIT Media Lab. And it allows young people uh, to create their own stories and games and animations and share their creations with others around the world. And millions and millions of kids around the world are now creating and sharing with Scratch. Every day, there are tens of thousands of projects shared in the online community. But last March, one project that went on the online community caught my attention. As you can see here, it was posted on March 18th, right as the pandemic was starting to lead to lockdowns around the world. And it was a project that was focusing on random acts of COVID kindness, made by a member of the Scratch community with the username, hello, yo, what's up? And as I looked at this project, it really caught my attention. And if you look at some of the notes that hello, yo, what's up wrote with this project, it was about you know, trying to encourage others to be able to uh, use Scratch to bring a little happiness and kindness into other people's lives. And she mentioned it had been three years since she last shared a project and seven years since she joined the site. But she came back during COVID because she said social isolation due the, to the pandemic has given me the combination of free time, a desire to create something, and the need to spread kindness that brought me back here. And for me, that represented some of the qualities that we're looking for. And I was proud to see that a member of the community was rising to this, using the community to express themselves creatively, but to connect with others, to spread kindness, to be part of a caring community. Because we see those qualities are so important to in, in the uncertain times we live in, the qualities of creativity and collaboration and caring and kindness. And we saw this coming to light in a project like this, where Hello, Yo, Yo What's Up? was offering to make projects to bring happiness into other people's lives and to match people together so they could support one another. So I look back to see, well, hello, yo, what's up? What was the story through her journey on the Scratch community? She joined in 2013. And in fact, since then she created 
there were six more than 600 projects. And you can see on her profile page, this repository of hundreds of projects that she created. Before the act of COVID kindness, she last made one in 2017. So she made these 600 projects between 2013 and 2017. And here was actually the very first project that you put up in April 2013. And it was a simple little story game that was based on a book that she had read. She explained that she'd first learned about Scratch in her fourth grade classroom. So she learned about it in class, then started using it outside of school with friends. And she started making projects based on things that she'd read. This was based on Betsy Tacey historical fiction. And she created different characters and brought them together and shared stories. But as I look back, even in that first project, you get a hint of what was special about some of the ways she was engaging. In addition to creating projects, you see in her notes, she said, please post suggestions. I love them and very well may use them. So she already was not just creating, but connecting with other people, listening for others, you know, listening to others, incorporating their ideas into what she was creating. And that's such an important part of the creative mindset to engage with others, to listen to what they say, take suggestions and continually iterate is such an important part of the creative process. You can see that she was bringing to bear as she was working in the Scratch community. As I looked through her projects, we could see Hello Yo What's Up came with all sorts of different ways of engaging with the community. So here's a project that she put up just a few months later in July 2013. It's called Blob CC. CC in Scratch often refers to coloring contest. So here, what Hello Yo What's Up did, she just put a simple circle there and then put up a challenge. She said, please use this circle in your own project and color it in and make a different project based on this circle. And you can then see how other people remixed her project and led to all different types of creative projects. There were certain games. Someone took the circle, made a basketball to turn into a basketball game. Here's another type of game where they took the circle and made a character that had a crown, a crown, but also gave the user options. At the top of the screen there, you can see you could put a crown on or put a bow tie or a beard. To the other part of the screen, for those who haven't seen Scratch, you can see those blocks are ways of describing the behaviors of the characters. So the other people were using Hello Yo What's Up Circle, elaborating the design, but also making it come to life through programming. And they put the blocks together, somewhat like building Lego bricks into a structure. In Scratch, you put the programming blocks to create behaviors. Other people made characters and turned them into narratives and stories. So we can see all the different ways that people built on Hello Yo What's Up work. Actually, my colleague, Natalie Rusk, interviewed Hello Yo What's Up to find out more about her experiences. And in talking about this project, Hello Yo What's Up said, it's kind of crazy to see all of that creativity from just a circle. But I think that's something we often see with creativity. You can start with a simple thing that maybe someone else suggests you and you build upon it. You remix it. You take ideas from others, you add your own, and then all sorts of different creativity comes from it, going in all sorts of different directions. And I think we see that with Hello Yo What's Up was both triggering creativity in others, but also in her own projects. If you look through the 600 projects, you see this enormous variety of what Hello Yo What's Up has created. There was musical projects and tutorials uh, and projects wishing others happy birthday. So all different types of cards and animations and games and tutorials. And that's something that we looked for when we were trying to get a sense of the creativity, whether it's of an individual or of a workshop or a class, we look for variety and diversity because if somebody made 600 projects, but they're all similar to one another, the quantity would not impress us. It's the diversity and range of things that they're creating that shows the creativity that she developed as she was on the site. So I think you can see as Hello Yo What's Up was working on these projects, she was learning to think creatively, coming up with this wide range of different projects, sparking other people to be creative, building on what others were doing. She was learning to reason systematically, putting together those graphical programming blocks 
to start with simple building blocks, but to make complex behaviors from them. Uh, having a logical, reasonable, systematic way of reasoning through problems and design. And she was also learned to work collaboratively, coming up with all different ways of collaborating, whether to encourage others to create or building on work that others did or making greeting cards for others in collaboration with them. So we see that through these types of environments, we can help support young people developing those skills that are so important uh, in their lives today. These skills will be important in their future work lives, but it's not just about their work lives. Certainly many, many new jobs today will require these types of creative thinking skills, but it's also important in their civic lives to be a member of a, of a society that's going through such civic challenges and, and also to go through, to, to apply them to their personal lives and to deal with the challenges of pandemic and other changes in our lives. So we hope that through these types of settings, young people can develop these capacities that will be so important to thrive and be active contributors in today's world. So how is it that we can support the development of these types of you know, capabilities? And in our group, we've often focused on four guiding principles for fostering creativity. And we call them the four P's of creative learning, projects, passion, peers, and play. We always wanna provide young people with opportunities to engage actively in projects that are based on their passions in collaboration with peers in a playful spirit. And I think you can see this in the Scratch community. As we developed Scratch, we were always thinking of these four Ps. Scratch is not based on you know, giving a series of problems to kids to solve and move on to the next problem. That's how many young people are introduced to coding these days. We took a different approach. We want kids to start with their own ideas, you know, create a project based on those ideas, because we knew that's the best way for them to develop their creative capacities. But we know it's important for young people to work on things that are based on their own interests and their passions. They're gonna be willing to work longer and harder and persist in the face of challenges if they're following their interests and passions. And we see the most creative work comes not when you're working by yourself, but you're working with and learning with peers and learning from peers. And we see that happening through the Scratch Online community and all the examples of how you saw Hello Yo What's Up interacting. And we wanna do it in a playful spirit. And when I say play, sometimes this is misinterpreted. Sometimes people think of play and they just think of laughing and having fun. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. When we think of play, we think of it more as an attitude, not as an activity. We have a playful attitude. It means you're willing to take risks and try new things. And creativity always comes from people who are willing to try new things and test the boundaries. So we wanna create an environment that's comfortable where people feel at home and comfortable in trying new things. So it's wonderful that someone like Hello You What's Up felt comfortable enough to come back to the Scratch community. So it is a comfortable place to try new things, to experiment with things like random acts of COVID kindness. So it's a playful way to work on projects based on passions and collaboration with peers and continue to develop your own creative capacities and support others in developing their creative capacities. And of course, an online world like Scratch is only one of many, many ways for young people to be developing those creative capacities. Actually, let me show you a video of one of the workshops that we ran that gives you a sense of how we, how we run workshops. As we work on workshops, we're also guided by these four Ps of projects, passion, peers, and play. So this is like a minute long video of a workshop we ran in our lab space at the Media Lab a couple of years ago. Uh, that young people ages like nine to 12 came in uh, with the challenge of you know, creating a park. Was, the theme was a day at the park. We'll often set a theme, but then give a wide range of different materials and possibilities for how they can explore the theme. So let's take a look and think of those four Ps as you watch the video. <laughs> 
the goal of these creative workshops is really to give children an opportunity to come up with their own ideas, imagine something, and then figure out how to design it. We should still keep this play but take this. They need to be constantly exploring, experimenting. It works! Oh my god! Yeah. Natural discovery by testing things, by tinkering, by experimenting, by creating. They're using Lego motors and sensors, and then if it doesn't work the way they want, they start revising it. So you have to kind of adjust the motor power so they, it actually has enough power to knock the dice off. So they're really learning through having a goal, having imagining something, and then bringing it to life. So rather than just thinking of the computer of something that I think, what am I supposed to do? They start thinking, what do I want to do with it? They start getting new ideas. I think even just from that minute long video, you can get a sense of that playful spirit where kids are trying new things, experimenting. It's okay if it goes wrong. You see many things do go wrong, but in a creative process, things are gonna go wrong, but you learn from mistakes. You don't see it as a problem, but it's something that you can then learn from and try something new. And you see the young people here adjusting and trying new things. Another thing that I really like about this video, it shows the use of all different types of materials and different kids will use different materials. You see everything from very traditional materials that kids might have used hundreds of years ago, a ball of cotton, a stick, uh, some more modern materials like Lego bricks that let you build sturdier structures, and then even more modern materials like scratch, which is then controlling the Lego materials. So kids are building on the screen to control things in the world. So you want to create opportunities for kids to do all types of creating, whether it's on the screen or off the screen or in combination, and provide a wide range of materials. Actually, as Sarah said in the opening comments, we believe firmly in this idea of wide walls. We want to let children, we want to create environments that have a low floor where it's easy to get started and a high ceiling. You can do more and more complex things, but maybe most important, wide walls, meaning that different kids can have their own pathways into the activity because different kids have different interests. So we need to support many different pathways. So having lots of different materials and lots of different possibilities for how they can work on their projects and ways of working together is such an important part for everyone to reach their full creative potential. Let me give one final example of another project we worked on that was creating spaces for learning, also based on those four Ps. And it, over, it actually interlocks with our work on Scratch. And that's the, our work on the Computer Clubhouse Network. Actually, this will be featured in one of the breakout sessions tomorrow this led by Gail Breslow, who's now the executive director of the Clubhouse Network. And we started the clubhouses in our group at MIT in collaboration with the local museum like 30 years ago. It's now an independent nonprofit network. Um, and actually these images are from the early 2000s. This is from 2004, because the clubhouses were intended as places for young people to come and use technology in creative ways to learn to express themselves creatively and to try new things. And they were designed especially to reach young people who hadn't had many of these opportunities before. So there's now a network of 100 of these clubhouses around the world. Uh, and they're all intended in order to reach young people who often haven't had the opportunities, often in communities that have faced systemic inequities and injustices. And I think just the, actually this, these photos are from the very first Scratch workshop we did. Our idea for Scratch grew out of our work at the clubhouse. We saw that young people at the clubhouse wanted to design their own stories and games and animations, but there weren't the right tools. And I do think there's a key aspect of scaling any innovation, making sure that it's being designed, that you have a deep understanding of what young people are looking for. We designed Scratch because we saw what young people at the clubhouse really wanted and we designed it for them. And then when you connect with the interests and the, of people, that's what's at the foundation for helping things scale. And then making it part of a community. Scratch, I think, has scaled so successfully because it's part of a community. Hello, yo, what's up? Didn't come just to create projects, to be part of a community. And we find that many people in the Scratch community say the same things. They keep coming back not just for creative expression, but because they can do it with others. And that supports the scaling. The same thing with the Clubhouse Network, which are physical spaces. 
And there are a hundred of them where young people come to connect with the community at their own clubhouse and then across different clubhouses around the world. I'll finish with one final story from the clubhouse. This is an image of a clubhouse I was visiting. This is one in Amman, Jordan. And I think you can even see just from the layout of the clubhouse how it aligns with those four Ps. Projects are on the walls. You can see what people have created in the past. They're highlighted. There are lots of spaces for collaborating. The chairs even have wheels so you can easily reconfigure them to form groups to work together. Uh, you can see there's a wide range of different thing, different types of examples of what kids have done. I was really remember, I have these strong memories of the visit to the clubhouse in Amman, Jordan, because I was visited, I was invited to Amman by the government of Jordan, who was impressed with the success of the clubhouse there. They were concerned because they had many other community technology centers that were not succeeding. And they wanted me to come and help them understand why weren't their centers succeeding the way the clubhouses were. So I went and visited, and here's an image of one of their, they were called knowledge stations. And for me, I think you can quickly see the real difference just looking at the space, how it's different from a clubhouse. It's pointing forward, designed for a teacher to be instructing. There's no space for people to collaborate. There are no examples for inspiration on the walls. For me, this image is a type of metaphor for the challenges that we face of still too many places holding on to outdated approaches to education. They're based on the delivery metaphor uh, that, that education being thought of as a way of delivering information or delivering instruction. So we need to shift the way people are thinking about education and learning and change the way they put it into practice. Now that's not easy, but I think that's the big challenge ahead of us. We have to shift people's mindsets and structures of education in order to open up the possibilities for creative learning for all kids everywhere. And this is challenging. There are a lot of entrenched structures, you know, that there are barriers between different subjects in schools. There are barriers between times of the day. There are barriers between in school and outside of school. We need to break down those barriers to change the structures of schools and to change people's mindsets so they no longer see education as a mean, as just a matter of delivering instruction or delivering information, but a way of cultivating creativity to allow everybody to express themselves creatively, to think creatively. Uh, but to shift those mindsets and to shift those structures is, is hard work. Uh, it's gonna take all of us working together. So I wanna end by reaching out to all of you to make these changes. It's so important to provide these opportunities for all young people around the world. But it's gonna take all of us working together to make it happen. It will really require a movement that brings together educators and designers and policymakers and curriculum developers and administrators First, to make sure that they all embrace a new vision of what education learning can be and should be in an age where creative thinking is more important than ever before. And then once they embrace that vision, to work together on how to put it into practice through projects, passion, peers, and play. I see this as the most important thing any of us can be working on. I'm dedicated to focusing on this. I hope the rest of you well as well, and I look forward to working with you to share these ideas, to make sure that we can provide all young people from all backgrounds with opportunities to be full and active contributors to tomorrow's society. Thanks so much.